Audi A6 Avant 2018 present. It might be difficult for younger people to believe, especially if they are seeing these pictures of the Audi A6 Avant, but years ago estate cars were viewed very much at the poor relations. A longer, heavier and more ungainly back was grafted onto a saloon body and the basic rear suspension meddled with until the car could carry half a hundred weight of coal, but often couldn't deal with bumps or corners satisfactorily. Such horrific things are no longer allowed to happen, and these days an estate will drive almost identically to the model it's based on. So if you like the Audi A6, you'll like the Audi A6 Avant, which is merely the estate version of that very impressive car. Anyone looking for a load-lagging Avant will probably want a diesel engine under the bonnet, and there are two to choose from a 201 bhp 2 liter 4 cylinder diesel a logically badged 40 tdi and a 282 bhp 3.0 liter 6 cylinder diesel 50 tdi if you fancy petrol you can have a 2 liter in either 201 bhp 40 tfsi or more potent 261 bhp 45 tfsi form there is also a 335 bhp 3 liter petrol in case you want to deliver things even faster Likewise with Dream, for the moment there are only two, Sport and this line. Sport Spec A6 events come with the most of the luxuries you're likely to want, including heated front seats, part leather upholstery, satellite navigation, keyless entry and go and 18-inch alloy wheels. Upgrading to S-Line trim brings 19-inch alloy wheels, sportier looks and leather and Alcantara seats. Choosing the black edition increases the wheel size to 20 inch and gets you plenty of black trim on the exterior, while Vorsprung models have the kitchen sink thrown at them in terms of kit, including 21 inch wheels, matrix LED headlights, extra safety technology and upgraded stereo. On the road, the 40 TDI version is the more logical choice because it's a good compromise between power and economy. It has more than enough grunt, although its 7-speed automatic gearbox can occasionally leave you waiting for it. The 50 TDI model is a real flyer, and like the less power engine, is remarkably quiet. It's attached to an 8-speed automatic gearbox that can also pause before delivering anything. There were four suspension options to choose from when the car was new, and two-level sport trim uses conventional steel springs and dampers. S-Line models use the same, but stiffened and lowered. You'll need to run to the top of the range Vorsprung version for adaptive suspension with switchable dampers that can be softened or stiffened to suit your mood. When you approach a corner, the event feels lighter and more agile than its size would lead you to expect. Some cars even come with four-wheel steering, which makes things sharper still. There's plenty of traction, whether front-wheel drive or four-wheel drive quattro, and the overall balance gives the driver confidence, although one or two of the Audi's luxury car rivals are more precise. Inside, it's easy to find the right driving position, thanks to an electrically adjustable seat and steering wheel. The driver is definitely pampered, with lumbar support and the dashboard of unimpeachable logic and good quality materials. As standard, you get clear analog dials ahead of you, but if the technology pack has been added, these are replaced by digital dials on 12.3-inch screen. They are excellent and do more than analog dials because they are highly configurable and show a wealth of useful information just below your sightline. Visibility is excellent, with front and rear parking sensors and the rear view parking camera. Audi's latest generation of infotainment system swaps a rotary controller, like BMW's iDrive, for a touchscreen with haptic feedback. The screen is sharp and 8.8 inch diagonally across as standard, but if you add the technology pack, the upgrades include a 10.1 inch screen. Up front, there is plenty of space for two, while in the rear, passengers enjoy more leg and headroom than most rivals' cars offer. A central third passenger will have to straddle a small central tunnel, but otherwise gets a good amount of room. The boot is positively massive and is a good shape and easily accessible. It's one of the best in the estate car class. This is a very large car, so check the front and back for scuffs and dents and the alloy wheels for curb damage. Check that all the electrical equipment works as it should, including sat navs, seat motors, and climate control. Check the electric rear tailgate too. It's too early in the life of this particular A6 to identify specific problems, but the number of faults on the older models was relatively low. 
Among them, problems with the car's infotainment system were a cause for concern, with phones not connecting and flickering screens being the main complaints. The latest software from Audi can cure some of these ills. Despite the old A6's reputation for having a great interior, there were some issues with rattling parcel shelves and buzzing from interior trims. A small number of cars made between the 1st of July and 15th of September 2020 were fitted with faulty crash sensors for the front side airbags. Check with an Audi dealer to find out if your car is affected by this, because the sensors will need to be replaced if it is. An issue with moisture getting into the mild hybrid system has been found with cars manufactured between the 10th of August 2018 and the 11th of March 2020. Find out if your A6 is affected by this, because repairs will need to be carried out at an audio to prevent future issues. There is possibility that the glass fitted to the panoramic sunroof of some cars built between the 16th of July and the 10th of October 2018 could become unstuck from the frame. Check with an Audi dealer whether or not your A6 is affected by this, because the glass will need to remove and stuck back into place if it is. The latest A6 wasn't included in the latest Watt Car Reliability Survey. However, Audi as a brand didn't do as well as BMW, 9th place, coming in 22nd overall place out of 31 car manufacturers in the same survey. It did finish ahead of Mercedes in 26th though. The 2.0 TDI 4-cylinder diesel is an engine that imbues the A6 event with remarkable refinement, such that there are times you wouldn't know it was a diesel. It's the cheapest in the range and is also the most economical, and unless you are most interested in straight line speed, that's enough to make it the one we'd seek out. Likewise, we'd stick with sport trim, as this offers all the goodies you could reasonably want or need. Our favorite Audi A6 Avant 2.0 TDI Sport Well, if you are the owner of this car, then please describe the problem that you had to face during the operation of the car. Perhaps it is your feedback that will help viewers when choosing a car. That's it for today. Thanks everyone for attention. It isn't much work for you to subscribe to the channel. See you soon.